Hello! Today I'll be showing you how to add custom sounds into Book Snacks, such as voices for snacks and music for levels. To do this, you'll require FMOD version 2.00.03 exactly. Uh, this is the only version that will work with properly with the game. I'll try and link this in the description, but you will need to make a free FMOD account to download it. I won't be showing the install here, as it's pretty easy to install. You'll also require a text file editor, such as Notepad or Notepad++, uh, to easily edit the files. Your sounds that you want to put in the game is something you'll also need. Uh, and if you're adding music, you'll need to find some of that as well. And if you are adding music, you'll also need the horsepower editor, uh, because it just makes it a bit easier. I'll link these in the description, and you'll also be able to find an installation tutorial for horsepower editor on my channel. So... The next thing we want to do is decide what files we're actually going to be replacing and figure out some of the logistics behind that. So what we need to do is go and find these files where the actual sounds are referred to. So where do, where does it say the sounds are used? Where does it say what sounds are used? So for the bunga, that's one of the examples we'll be going for today, replacing the bunga sounds. We're going to find some of these files here. So in the book snacks folder, I'm going to go and find the two files that I know that the Bunga sounds are stored in. And this is the same for most snacks. Uh, you go to the definitions, bugs, and then the burger.xml file. And as you can see here, we can see the voice file here for when it's captured and the voice file for when it cries as well. So, and then these are the names of the events here. But these are actually the names of the events. So the event will be called captured cry and then we need to find the rest of them as well so we'll go back to content and then most of the sound files for the snacks are stored in the models folder and an xml file there so we go into models bugs burger and then burger.xml here and we can see the rest of the voice files here the vast majority of them will be here so what we want to do now is get them to refer to our own custom sounds instead because these are referring to the sounds within the existing game files an easy way to do this will be to replace these lines here with our own lines instead an easy way to do that will be to add two after burger here so it says burger two instead a new it'll be a new directory when we go into fmod it'll be a bit of a pain to replace all of these manually so i'm just going to quickly do that with notepad plus plus you can do that by just copying and then pasting that line in but with a little edit there and then if you click replace in all open documents it will replace all of these files with all of these files. And as you can see, it's changed them all to Burger 2. So we just save those changes we've made there, and that's done. We'll leave those open for now so we can come back to them later when we're in FMOD, and now we'll open FMOD. So as you can see, FMOD Studio 2.00.03, going to open that, and you aren't gonna to wanna to click Move Project. So now we're in FMOD, just shrink that a bit so it doesn't take up the whole screen. We need to make our directory first. I'm going to click new folder. So the first one is game audio. That's the very first folder you see there. So these are paths within FMOD to the actual files. It goes game audio, SFX, book snacks, burger 2, voice. These are the folders that we're going to be making here. So SFX. You've got to make sure also that this is case sensitive, uh, so it's capital S, lowercase fx, and then book snacks, then for us, burger 2, this is where our new files will be, then voice, and these bits at the end aren't folders, these are the names of the events, so we want to add in our event names. There are about 16 to 18 events in total. So I will copy and paste about 16 to 18 events, probably more just in case. So say about 20 and we'll just delete what we don't use. I'm going to rename all of these to these event names here and here. Uh, but I'll skip most of this, uh, but I'll give you an example of how to do it. Uh, just quick, double click the name of the event and then it will give you the option to change it. So this is alerted. And now that's changed the name of the event. I'll quickly do all of these, but I'll skip over that. So it's not boring for you to watch me just rename things. See you in a second. Okay, so now we have all of these done. And I'll just delete the remainders that we won't be using. 
and the next stage will be to put our sound files for the actual game that we want to hear inside of these events. So I've got my pig sounds here for my Minecraft pig. That's what I'll be replacing the bunga sounds with is one of a Minecraft pig. And I'll just click alerted and I'll just drag and drop alerted in there, making sure it's right at the start there. So you want to make sure that it, it isn't anywhere further down the timeline. It's very start of the timeline. Do the same for the others. I'll skip this bit as well because it's just dragging and dropping sounds. Okay, now we've done that, we want to add our idle sounds as well. These are the only sounds that we've not populated like the others. That's because for this, we're going to be using what's called a multi instrument, which is using more than one sound in a single event. So drag your three sounds. For me, it's three. For you, it could be more than three or less or two. Um, and just place it right at the start there like any of the others. We'll come back to this later, but what we're going to do now is prepare all the other sounds for use in game. Looking first at this, we want to first edit the spatializer. So looking at this, we want it to be the first one to be around 340, 380, and then the second one we want to be around 60, 65. And we want to make this generally the same for every sound. So it's quite small, it's very difficult to see but it's it's pretty easy to see when you're the one doing it. So we go through and we do that for every single one. So move that to 330 and then do that for 60 odds. So anything between 60 and 70 should generally be the same. Um, but yeah, so I'll do this for all of these. Uh, so I'll, again, I'll cut so you don't have to watch me repeat the same thing for all of these sounds. It's quite slow and tedious, some of these parts. Okay, so now all of the spatializers here have been changed to be roughly between 360 to 4 and between about 60 to 65. Shouldn't really be a noticeable difference in game, but generally it will make it so that at different distances you're more easily able to hear the snack. So the further away, the less you hear it, the closer you are, the more you hear it. Pretty simple stuff. So the next thing we want to do then is to turn up the turn up the sounds a bit so i know these sounds as i've tested them in the game before are a bit quiet so you have this here this little this little turning dial here is what controls the volume so db represents decibels and the higher the decibels the higher the volume the lower the decibels and if it's minus decibels as well the lower the volume so i know that i need to turn these about about seven decibels to be heard properly within the game so i'll just quickly turn all of these about seven decibels so we want to then make our idle sounds work. Idle works a bit differently to the others because they loop. So because they loop, we need to add a loop region in. So we right click this black box above our sound here and you click and then you click loop region. But you want to expand this. So if you go to the side of loop region, you get these little arrows pop up and you want to drag it all the way from the start to the end. And now what you have, this is something that will loop perpetually in the game. But having an audio just loop constantly does not sound very good. If you've got a snack that is just making the same noise over and over and over again, that doesn't sound good. So what we need to do is add in some rules to that. So we're going to do this via probability. So we don't want to turn on probability. And I think the soft spot is around between 15, 30. I like 28 as a probability. And that basically means that there are gaps between when the bugs make noises, so it sounds more natural. And in doing so, you end up with it being less of a problem. So we want to also turn uh, polyphony uh, down to one and stealing to none. And then we want to click time instead here. And now what we've got is we've got our probability setup, which will basically stagger the bugs that sounds to sound more natural. There is one more thing to do before we export this. We want to assign these to a bank. So we'll go to this bank here and we'll rename this to our bank. I want to rename this to, let's call it SB Bunga Sounds and then enter. And that's the master bank. And we want to assign these to a bank. So we assign these to the Bunga Sounds Bank, and you can probably select all of them, assign them all at once to the bank. And now we can see inside here we have our sounds assigned to a bank.
So what we want to do now is export and build these. So first we will save. I'm going to save this on my desktop. I'm going to just call it Bunga Test. And there should be a folder that appears on my desktop now called Bunga Test there. So in your folder, you want to go into the build desktop and you have your files here. These are the, the files that contain all of the sound stuff. To get this into the game working properly, you need to put them into a zip. So right click them both and click compress to zip file. And let's call it SB Bunga Sounds. And then I'm going to control X and cut it. And then I'm going to go to my bug snacks folder and we'll control V and paste it in. And now we have them in what's called the root folder of the game. This is how sounds are loaded. They need to be in a zip file inside the root folder of the game in order to load them. And we just double check. We have our paths are perfectly fine. They're the same as the ones in game. And now when we load the game, which we'll do now, we should see that the sounds are being loaded, loaded perfectly fine and the Bungus sounds are now that of the Minecraft pig. So if we go to Garden Grove, we should hear the Bunga oinking. There we go. And it should have some passive sounds as well. There we go. Perfect. That works perfectly, perfectly. So next then is adding some, put some music into the game. So we'll just quick let this. And we want to add some custom music. It's pretty similar to the first thing. We want to go into events and under game audio, we're going to add a new folder. I'm going to call this music. And then we'll call this, let's call this Minecraft. Test. And what you want to do is add in another 3D event. So I'll call this test music. And we'll just assign this to the bank, Bunga Sounds. So get your sound in your folder. So I've got Mice from Venus from the Minecraft soundtrack here. I'm going to drag and drop that like we did with the other sounds. Like the Bunga Sounds for Idle, we need to add a loop region into this because music loops. And we'll just drag and drop that. Go all the way to the end taking its time. Now from testing I know this music is quite loud so we're going to reduce the sound of it by about eight. It might still be too loud but that's the point you you tinker with it and you change it until it works and we're just going to select this to take a look make sure everything's right. We want to remove a spatializer so if you have a spatializer there delete that and you want to click persistent there to make sure persistence on and all of this should now be perfectly fine. And we'll just double check everything and everything looks fine. So what we want to do now is build this again. So we'll click build all platforms. And as we can see it's building. And we want to go into our test folder again. Build desktop. As we can see these files have just been updated press to a zip and we're going to overwrite the zip that we've just placed in there with this new zip. Okay so what next then? Like with the Bunga sounds we need to actually edit some of the game files to get this into the game. However I found the easiest way to do this is with Horsepower Editor. So we're going to open the Horsepower Editor. As I've said previously there's a tutorial on the channel of how to install this. It's pretty simple, not too difficult. And we're going to open perfect forest underscore inner is the file that we're going to be working from because this is the level that we want to change the sounds for. So we don't really need to be able to navigate around this level. We're only going to be working from within this side section here. And the first thing we want to do is add in our sounds. So we go and click the level underscore 998. And this is where some of the sound data is outlined. We need to first outline the sound bank path. You can either write this in or you can just 
go and find it using this little underscore thing here. Personally, I prefer to just write it in. So let's just double check what our sound path name is. The bank path is called, let's get into Bunga Sounds. SB underscore Bunga Sounds. This first one is what we want to call it. So SB underscore Bunga Sounds is what we'll be writing in here. And then we want to add the path for the music event name, which the path for this will be this path here. So we can click copy path, right click, copy path, and then we want to just paste that in horsepower editor in the music event name section there and then press enter and now that's been added there however we're not done yet this level has a few bits of code that tell it to play music that we need to remove these few things here so stop music sunrise stop music sunset rain music rain music night music range night music range day music these will play over our music, which means that we won't hear either of them properly. Two music playing at the same time, not very good. For this, we're just going to delete all of these. So we select all of them, right click, delete, and they're gone. So I won't load up the game to test this. What we'll do is we'll just launch the game within the editor by pressing this play icon up here. And it should, hopefully, work perfectly fine. Guess we'll see. So in a few seconds you should hear the music kick in. It's a bit of a long start this song, so you'll be able to hear that properly now. So this is now just a new song that's replaced the usual music for Bug Snacks. And that's how you would replace that music as well. So that's the end of the tutorial. I, I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you've learned something, and I've certainly had fun making it. So enjoy and uh, happy modding!